Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Sarah Labrat and today I'm going to be trying Brandon Sanderson's writing routine. I have been wanting to try his writing routine ever since I took his creative writing lecture series that he teaches at BYU, but he posts on YouTube every year. And because he talked about his writing routine in one of those lectures and about how he doesn't typically wake up until noon and then he doesn't start writing until the afternoon and then he writes again in the evening, but I'll be talking more about his actual routine here in a few minutes. And so if you go on to enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because that really supports my channel by telling the YouTube algorithm that you liked my video and that someone else might too. And now without further ado, let's get into trying Brandon Sanderson's writing routine. Brandon Sanderson supposedly doesn't wake up until about noon because he doesn't want to get up in the morning because he's a writer. Unfortunately, I still have a day job, so I did wake up at 8.30 today, but I've been working from bed and now it's 11.42. He says he doesn't get up until about 12 and then he starts writing at around one and then writes from about one until five-ish. Other interviews said noon to four and I think it's just a solid like four or so hour chunk relatively shortly after he wakes up. So with that, in a few minutes, I will be getting out of bed and starting Brandon Sanderson's writing routine. It is now 12.54, I'm gonna start writing at one. But before then, I wanted to sit down and talk a little bit more about Brandon Sanderson's writing routine and writing schedule before we really, really get into it today. I did take some time to like, try and wake up more as like a person because I'm normally like an afternoon evening person anyways. I'm not a morning person. The fact that I woke up at like 8.30 this morning was not great honestly because I went to bed at 3.30 last night, which honestly is very on brand with Brandon Sanderson because he doesn't like getting up early and splits his writing into two sessions, one between 12 and four or one and five and then from 10 until midnight or 10 until 4 a.m. anywhere within that range, but he splits up his writing into the two sessions. And because he tends to go so late. I think that it's totally fair that I stayed up really late last night and I think that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Definitely dragging a little bit today because of it, but hopefully I'll snap out of it here. Between his two writing sessions, he says that he will hang out with his family and do other things, which is great because right now it's cloudy, but as soon as it clears up, I will probably want to go outside and lay by the pool as well as go hang out with some of my friends. And so I think that that is going to be a very nicely split up day with the two writing sessions. In a blog post on his website, Brandon Sanderson answered the question, what was your average daily word count when working as a part-time writer? Which is technically what I am right now because I'm definitely not full-time. But his answer was, I was a special case as I intentionally picked a job where I could write at work. I shot for 2,000 words a day and I suggest to new writers that 2K a week be a minimum. That gives you a book in about a year. So I think that 2,000 words a day is a very solid minimum because I'm working on draft five of my high fantasy novel and not drafting something. I think that drafting 2,000 would be a little bit more difficult Difficult, but I think that with editing, I'm gonna be able to hit that no problem. But I also kind of have a job that I can write during the day because I just have to work when trips are popping up because I work for an airline. So when issues with the trips pop up, I will need to jump over and do that. But fingers are crossed that not much is gonna pop up today. But his daily word count and time goal now that he is a full-time writer is to write every day and he gives himself word count goals. He says that usually it's a 2000 word minimum or a certain page goal if revising. It varies though, 10 pages pages is often my goal. I will keep that in mind with today. He says that he normally hits it and sometimes does much more. He writes faster at the end of a book than at the beginning. Also, some days he writes for four or five hours and some days he writes for 14 or 16. He says that he tries to keep distractions at a minimum. He writes at night so there's less noise, which doesn't work for the day session, but will for this evening. And so considering these two kind of goals that I was able to find of a minimum of like four to five hours upwards of like 14 or 16, which disclaimer, I don't think I'm hitting today. And writing at least 2,000 words or editing or revising at least like 10 pages or a goal of 10 pages a day. That's what we're going to shoot for today. It just turned to be one o'clock. So let's get into the first four hour writing session. Because of Brandon Sanderson's daily goals, I wanted to update you guys on where I was getting started at the beginning of that last sprint. I was working on editing at chapter 23 again in draft five of my high fantasy project that I call Project DE, and that chapter starts on page 78. It is now 2.01, but I did not write for an hour. I wrote for the first 30 minutes, and I edited three pages during that, so page 78, page 79, and page 80. And then a work thing popped up, so I just had to take care of that really quick. I did go ahead and write on the 
couch because Brandon Sanderson says that he writes in two places and that is a comfortable chair in his bedroom where he gets to kind of relax and do some writing. And his second spot is actually a treadmill desk, which I unfortunately don't have access to as cool as that sounds. But now that I just finished up sending some work emails and now it's 2.02 p.m., I think I need to move over to my desk because if I keep sitting here, I'm going to stay far too relaxed and I'm just gonna wanna procrastinate. And with that, chapter 23 has been completed for draft five, which means I get to check this off. Nice. And this chapter ended up being 2,009 words, which means I added about 150 words to this chapter, which I'm perfectly fine with. That being said, it is now 2.33. I'm kind of on a roll, so let's start the next chapter. I'm still working on chapter 24, but it just turned to be three o'clock, meaning that I am two hours into my first four hour writing session of the day. And out of those two hours, I have spent one hour and 15 minutes editing, which I'm pretty happy with considering that I realistically am working today. I started on page 78. I'm now on page 84, meaning that we are making progress. I'm not totally sure of my current word count because I don't really check until I'm done with each chapter. But again, we are working on chapter 20. 24. And I will have to admit that I accidentally chose a great day to do this because normally when it's sunny outside, I want to be outside, but it's been cloudy almost all day today, which is fantastic because I'm fine with staying inside when it's cloudy, which is making this easier for me. But I am noticing that this is very much a test of patience and a reminder of my shortish attention span because it's a real exercise to not flip over my phone and check social media, which is why I've been doing time lapses. And I strongly suggest doing time lapses. If you are ever working on something and just want to keep checking your phone, time lapse whatever you're doing on your phone and it will help solve that urge because you want to watch the time lapse when it's over and in order to do that you can't interrupt the time lapse. So I am kind of using that as a trick to help limit my distractions right now but because it's 3 p.m. I am getting kind of hungry because I've only had breakfast today so I'm gonna get up and start making myself some lunch and then we're gonna sit back down and do some more. It is now 4.12, meaning that I am three hours, three-ish hours into my first writing session of my two writing sessions today. And I just finished chapter 24 that I actually combined with chapter 23 because I think it flows a lot better that way. But that means that chapter 24 is now done and I get to check it off just like that. And now let's add up what that total word count was. So this chapter was just about 1700 words and now it's just about 2100 words. So I added about 400 words to this. We're gonna call it chapter, even though I added it into the previous one, but whatever. So now I'm gonna write that down in my notebook just to keep track of all of my changes that are happening, which means that the next thing is now chapter 25. Oh good, and it looks like we're gonna be writing a new chapter. Okay, that's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But finishing chapter 24 does put me at a little bit over 4,000 words edited so far today, which I'm feeling very good about. I also started on page 78 and I'm now on page 87, meaning that I'm almost at the 10 page mark for today, which is great. And during this last little sprint of really dedicated focus, towards the beginning of it, I was really feeling like I was like self-sabotaging myself. And like I was really getting distracted or I wanted to be distracted. And it was reminding me a lot of the limiting beliefs that I had talked through in a previous video where it feels like I'm almost doing it intentionally because I don't fully believe that I can accomplish what I want to accomplish. But part of what Brandon Sanderson is known for and really appreciated for is his dedication to his writing and his amazing work ethic. And that work ethic that allowed him to write five books in the two years of the pandemic for which he then started that Kickstarter with the goal of a million and then knocked that out the park and hit like 30 million or something in 30 days in order to self-publish those novels that he had written during those two years. So he's known for his work ethic and I think that goes without saying even on his lighter days when he writes at least 2,000 words or he works for at least four or five hours that's still crazy. That is so much time and I really 
really admire that. And that is something that I really appreciate. And that is something that I really enjoy about making videos like this, where I'm trying other authors' writing routines and writing schedules is because making videos like this are motivation for me to stick to that person's writing routine for at least a day and really put that intentionality into the writing and really back up the writing with the intentionality of just sitting down and being loyal to the page and making sure that you are working on what you said you were gonna work on and really getting to try the routine that works for somebody else. However, it just is interesting that I looked at my limiting beliefs recently and now that I feel my limiting beliefs coming up and I feel the want to self-sabotage and I want to just like numb out and watch a TV show and play Candy Crush on my phone or something and that's what I like am craving right now. Even though as soon as I finish a chapter, it feels amazing. And I do think that part of it is the limiting beliefs and I do think that part of it is more along the lines of like not keeping promises to myself in the recent past that now that I have something like this in front of me, I'm almost undercutting myself and almost underestimating myself and what I can accomplish during a day and while I'm trying Brandon Sanderson's creative writing routine. Just observations. Also, on a slightly more fun note, the sun is out finally. And a fun little fact is that I live in Utah. Brandon Sanderson also lives in Utah. He teaches at BYU, which is about 45 minutes south from where I live. So if you follow this mountain range down, probably about four or five more mountains that way is close to where he lives. It's now five o'clock. I totally zoned out for that last like 30 or 40 minutes. So I didn't get anything done. I think I just need to be outside in the sun because I'm very distracted by the fact that it's sunny. So we're gonna go do that. That's not what I was expecting. Okay, just kidding. It is way cloudier outside than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to put on some makeup and then film some Instagram reels instead. I'm feeling much more like a put together person in this outfit that I was just filming in. I just got a bunch of Instagram reels filmed, which is awesome. It is now 6.50. I still have about three hours until Brandon Sanderson typically picks up his writing schedule again for the evening. So I think the next thing on the docket is probably for me to make dinner. That seems wise. Let's do that. It's now 9 p.m. In full honesty, I thought I was going to have plans like two hours ago so that I was going to be back by 10 in order to start writing again. However, with the weather being weird outside and my plans falling through, now I have new plans that start now at 9 p.m. So my second writing session might get pushed back a little bit more, like a little bit past 10, maybe like 11, maybe even midnight, but I will still do a second writing session this evening, but because Brandon Sanderson takes time for family and friends in the evening and because my plans fall through and because I feel like pent up and like locked up in my apartment right now, I'm going to go do this because this seems like the healthiest thing for my brain. Because I think if I were to sit down in an hour and do some more writing, I would not be productive. But if I go do this and then do some writing after, I think I could be. That was a very good idea for me to leave my apartment. That was very healthy. It was great. It was very fun. I was definitely feeling too pent up in my apartment. And so that was great, especially with the weather being what it was today. I think that that was a very, again, healthy thing for me to do. And I was kind of assuming I was gonna miss that 10 p.m. deadline, and I did. It's now midnight, as in like exactly midnight. So let's get started with writing session number two. I understand that I'm a little bit late, but we're gonna try and get at least another hour or two done. But I also have work meetings tomorrow, so I can't stay up like crazy late. So I do actually have to be like somewhat responsible and go to bed at a decent time, but we're still gonna get more done because that's what Brandon Sanderson would do. WWBSD. I need that on a sticker. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but after midnight, I just feel like much more of a person than I do earlier on in the day. And I'm looking at myself now versus what I was seeing earlier, wearing this same sweatshirt and obviously no jewelry, no makeup but how exhausted I looked earlier today versus how I look now and I think I look much better now. But I was also realizing that I only got like three, three and a half hours of sleep last night because I was up until 3.30 writing. And then I woke up at like 7.30 for work and then started doing things around like 8.30 for my job because I could not fall back asleep. So I've been a little delirious today and it's been kind of fun, but it is now 1.13 a.m. I am deciding to call this the end of my second writing session for today, primarily because I know I have stuff tomorrow that I need to get 
get up and do, unfortunately. And because I did not sleep well last night, I am rapidly losing steam to keep going. Across my two writing sessions today, I did end up having a dedicated writing time of about five hours and 15 minutes. The first writing session being four hours from one until 5 p.m. And then the second writing session being from midnight to 1.15. However, out of those five hours and 15 minutes, I would say based on my writing sprints that I was doing, no, I have no idea if Brandon Sanderson does writing sprints or not. From the interviews that I've watched, it seems like he probably does doesn't, but that is what was keeping my attention today was doing writing sprints. And so then if you total up the writing sprints that I did amongst making food and everything, within that five hours and 15 minutes across my two writing sessions, I think I actually did a solid two hours and 45 minutes worth of like super dedicated focus to editing, which all in all I think is pretty good. I have not done over an hour and much less over two hours in like a hot minute. So the fact that I did almost three hours of what I would again consider to be super focused writing time, I'm very proud of. I also started on page 78 and then I went to page 88 and then I decided to skip a chapter and I'd worked on page 91 to 94, meaning that I worked on probably roughly about 13 pages and I think that that's super solid solid for editing and revising. It lines up well with my goals that I've set for myself for July and my six month goals, and it works out well with Brandon Sanderson's revision goals. I also finished editing chapter 23, chapter 24, and then I skipped chapter 25 and 26, and then I finished editing and combining chapter 27 and chapter 28. The last two were relatively short, but considering that I finished editing four chapters today, I just tallied it up and across those four chapters, I ended up editing 5,406 words, which again, I'm very happy with. It feels very significant. Considering that I am naturally more of a night owl and very much a nighttime writer, I really like this writing routine and I wish I didn't have stuff going on tomorrow and I wish that I had gotten better sleep last night so that I could continue to write this evening and just keep going because I think that that would be really cool. But because I normally write at night, it kind of feels like today was two separate days of writing because I got so much done earlier on today and then I still got to write this evening and it was significant significant enough, again, at like a dedicated two hours and 45 minutes, that it felt kind of like two entirely separate days of writing, which is cool because I accomplished so much that it felt like it needed to be more than just one day, but it was just one day. There are a couple things that I would take into consideration if I were to try this in the future, and I am interested in trying this really diligently for like a week and seeing how much I can accomplish, just because it seems so similar to like an ideal writing routine that I would want to have with like the dedicated amount of time split into two major writing portions, one earlier on in the day so that I can kind of get ahead of it and then one at night when I'm like really in the zone. And the first thing is that this is probably not a super consistent day-to-day -day routine for me, but I think that sprinkling a couple of these days in that are a little bit heavier on the writing and a little bit heavier on the intention of writing throughout a week would be very beneficial to my writing schedule and my writing routine just because of the fact that I was was able to edit 5,406 words tonight. That's so many. And then I would want my initial writing session to be like 11 to three, I think, or something in there, like maybe like 11 to two. So it could be a little bit more concentrated. And then at like two, I could get up and make myself some lunch. And then in the evening, probably like 11 to two again, maybe that's the key. I need to do 11 to two and 11 to two. <laughs> maybe that video is coming up. Maybe I need to try that because I feel like starting writing at like 12 or one with the intention of writing for four hours is a little too late in the day, especially because I currently have a full-time job and so I can't just write forever into the night as much as I want to do that. So it might be helpful for me to shift that forward a little bit to, like I said, like 11 to two and then maybe like 10 to one or 11 to two again in the evening. And I think that at least for me right now, two, two to three hour dedicated writing sessions would be more beneficial for me than like two, four hour writing sessions just because of my current attention span. And creativity is a muscle I fully, fully think that this can just skyrocket if you really put the intentionality into it. However, I also think that you have to have the time availability to do so. It was really annoying getting interrupted with work a couple times <laughs> during this video and having to take care of that stuff. But again, it's my full-time job. I'm trying to just take that in stride and continue moving forward with it. But I was also noticing how quickly I was fatiguing and getting lazy, especially when it looked really, really nice out, starting around like 3.30 or four, which is normally around when I go outside to like, 
be in the pool. And so I think out of the writing routines that I've tried so far, Brandon Sanderson's is one of the ones that seems the most likely for me to incorporate into my own writing routine and my own writing schedule and actually taking parts of this writing routine and building it into my own. And that will be very interesting to see as we move forward if I continue to do this and if I continue to try to stick to this. So with that, I might have to try incorporating this into a week of writing in the future. So if you want to see that video in any other of my writing vlogs, make sure that you scroll down below, hit that big red subscribe button and that little notification bell next to it so you don't miss another upload. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because that really supports my channel by telling the YouTube algorithm that you liked my video and that someone else might too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoyed trying Brandon Sanderson's writing routine today and I think I learned a lot about myself and my creativity from it. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sarah Labrat and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.